Hello fellow handlers, this is a continuation of the previous video in this series regarding the lore of the Delta Green role-playing game. If you have not seen the first video in this series, I would highly recommend it and would be linking it above. As in this episode, we are picking up with the political scene beginning to set for World War II, as many pieces started to shift in Europe around the unnatural, whether they be old forces reuniting under new banners, or brand new organizations dedicated to the study and exploitation of those forces beyond human understanding. In Germany, Heinrich Himmler, leader of the SS and second in command of the newly in power Nazi party, established Sonderkommando H in early 1935 as a special group tasked with searching for evidence that medieval witch trials in Germany were part of a covert Christian pogrom to destroy vestiges of the ancient Aryan religion. This research is collated into a card catalog of over 30,000 entries, each detailing a victim of the German witch trials, which became known as the Hexenkartothek. Four years later, in 1939, having discovered an arcane formula for the resuscitating of Yevital salts during their research of medieval records, a section of Sonderkommando H uses the formula to revive the corpse of Jürgen Tess, a 17th century sorcerer. Heinrich Himmler immediately orders the creation of the Karoltekia, a special department answerable only to the Reichsführer SS to research and exploit the occult for military purposes. All the while, the third German Antarctic expedition arrives on Princess Martha coast of Antarctica and begins charting the region two weeks later. After nearly two months of relative quiet, the German scout aircraft Boreas locates an unusually shaped hole in the ice shelf, which looks artificial. German expeditionary explorers land and uncover the spot in the ground. Inside, they find the ruins of a seemingly abandoned, vast, pre-human city. By order of Himmler, all findings of the third German Antarctic expedition are brought under the command of the Karoltekia. The abandoned city's location is designated Point 103. Shortly after, the Karatekia launched Operation Ice Palace to investigate the lost city found by the Antarctic Expedition. Accessible only by submarine, Point 103 gradually grows to house 22 archaeologists, cryptographers, and experts in ancient languages. Point 103 is placed under the command of Dr. Walter Kulch who quickly ascertains that the lost city was built millions of years before by alien plant-like creatures. This discovery bears many similarities to another expedition to the Antarctic conducted by the Miskatonic University, a geological and biological study of Antarctica conducted by a geologist by the name of William Dyer. The expedition encountered unnatural forces when its researchers uncovered a race of long dormant quote-unquote elder things and then a massive incomprehensible city housing a monstrous Shoggoth. In this case, P4 arranges with the university to suppress the reports of those discoveries and discourages further exploration. Roughly around the same time as the Antarctic expedition findings returned to the Fuhrer, the Karotekia discovers repeated references to an ancient undersea race called the Deep Ones. They research the Deep Ones aggressively. However, the landscape would suddenly change with the invasion of Poland by Germany as Britain and France declared war on Germany, World War II had officially begun. Before 1939, Heinrich Himmler issued a secret order signed by Hitler establishing Karotekia Project Blackwater. The goal of such was to use magical formula in an ancient tome called Tenebrosa Aqua, or Dark Water, 
to contact an ally with the loathsome but powerful race of subhumans called the Deep Ones. Over the next few months, the team decodes four Polynesian calling rituals while building a diplomatic primer for dealings with the Deep Ones. All the while in England, by May of 1940, Amanda Chalmers, a British psychic who left MI-13 after the First World War, reports a premonition of the advance of Germany's Army Group B into Belgium as an elaborate feint to draw British and French forces in and cut them off. The prediction is dismissed, but the leader of MI-13, Major David Cornwall, places it in a sealed envelope and sends it to the Prime Minister's office, with instructions for the envelope to be opened on June 5th of 1940. Paired with this, the Red Orchestra spy network infiltrates the Ancient Heritage Research and Teaching Foundation, or Anna Nerbi, and passes on knowledge of the existence of Sunder Commando H to GRU SV-8. However, Germany invaded Belgium, the Netherlands, and France just a week after. By June 22nd of 1940, most of Europe is under German control. One month later, the envelope with Amanda Chalmers' May 1st predictions is opened at Prime Minister Churchill's office. The predictions convince Churchill of the value of MI-13 psychic reconnaissance. Prime Minister Churchill reorganizes MI-13 into an interagency task force jointly supported by the SIS, MI-5, and the Ministry of Economic Warfare, but reporting directly to the Prime Minister. MI-13 is redesignated officially as Pisces, or the Paranormal Intelligence Section for Counterintelligence, Espionage, and Sabotage. Because of these developments, the now leader of Pisces, David Cornwall, moves the headquarters from Whitehall to Kelmar Manor in the Scottish Highlands. Three days later, the newly founded Pisces opens offices in the British Museum to study occult tomes collected in the King's Library. Over the next three years, 12 books of a natural significance are researched, including the Latin Necronomicon and the Nicotic Manuscripts. Studies provide mixed results at best, as five researchers go insane throughout the war, one commits suicide, and another disappears in the London underground. Shifting back to the Karotekia, after almost a year of work, Operation Darkwater relocates from Offenburg to Cap de la Hague on the Normandy coast, following a lead in the Tenebrosa Aqua about a Deep One colony in that area. A large 40-man facility is constructed and guarded by Wehrmacht troops and nicknamed the Boathouse, due to the mistaken impression that it houses a mine-laying operation. The Karotekia orders the SS to divert over a thousand Jewish prisoners headed for labor camps near Krakow to Cap de la Hague, Normandy, France, so that they might serve as supposed test subjects, tragically being sacrificed to the foul Deep Ones. Operation Darkwater's first experiment succeeds, as a section of water off Cap de la Hague begins to grow a vivid greenish-blue following the use of one of the calling rituals found in the Tenebrosa Aqua. The episode is captured on camera by a Wehrmacht film crew, and samples of the water and strange algae that produce the glow are sent to the Stuttgart Technical College. On a beach off Cap de la Hague, Operation Darkwater successfully calls a Deep One named Cloud and proposes an alliance between the Nazis and the Deep Ones. Cloud instructs them to use the calling ritual again at the next new moon and bring sacrifices. And four days later, the Karotekia complied, as Operation Darkwater sacrificed 37 mentally ill men and children to the Deep Ones in the first of several such exchanges. Henry, the most human-looking of the Deep Ones, remains an emissary to present their terms. An 800-mile stretch of the French shore as well as human women to serve as surface breeding stock, in exchange for a commitment by the Deep Ones to bring a halt to all movement on the seas. After one week, 
Henry returns to his family, and the pattern of call and sacrifice continue for the next 19 months, with neither side closer to an agreement. SS Standartenführer Karl Ollendorf of the Karotechia is personally assigned by Heinrich Himmler to take part in Project Ice Palace due to Ollendorf's career as a mining and combat engineer, along with an amateur archaeologist and youth in the Bavarian Alps. Ollendorf set sail aboard the commerce raider Atlantis and later makes a mid-ocean transfer onto the submarine U-118, and four months later, Karl Ollendorf arrived at point 103 in Antarctica with his combat engineers. On New Year's of 1942, at point 103, Karl Ollendorf unearths an ancient power source he names the Thule Generator, allowing a wide-scale expansion of the base. A labor force of concentration camp prisoners is transported to point 103 to support this expansion, and, after Ollendorf learns that the fuel generator requires regular feeding, he orders the prisoners to be used as fuel for his machine. Four days later, the Karotechi acquire a translation of inscribed shards held by an African tribe and believed to have been initially written by a long extinct alien race. The book is transported to point 103 where it proves invaluable in deciphering the murals that line the walls of the ancient underground necropolis. Back in Germany, on April 7th of 1942, 16 prisoners were selected from Niederhagen and Sachsenhausen concentration camps due to their labor experience, were brought to Wolfsburg Castle to complete a rush construction job under the order of Hermann Bartels, the castle's chief architect, and a member of the Karotechia. For 21 days, the prisoners worked, literally under the gun, to the odd specifications provided. This involved digging a 6-meter square cell beneath the Reichsfuhrer simmer room, the smelting of gold and silver to set in a precise pattern within the rock, as well as following dozens of overly specific instructions provided with hand-drawn diagrams. When the prisoner work crew was finished on April 28th of 1942, they were executed inside the cell. No witnesses remained, and all records of the Karotechia were destroyed. Simultaneously in Russia, a subset program of the People's Commissariat dedicated to occult research, independent of GRU SV8, begins experimentation on protohumans, later identified as ghouls, that have been captured for the study of their superhuman abilities. As a breeding facility is established outside of Guriev, on the Caspian Sea, the researchers discovered that a cult has emerged among ghouls in the Soviet Union that worshipped Stalin as the Great Provider. About a year later, after the Nazi siege of Leningrad, GRU SV-8 responds to reports of cannibalistic creatures bearing the same kind of necrophagous tendencies as those witnessed during the Russian Civil War. During their investigation, SV-8 uncovers counterintelligence friendlies under the umbrella of Smirsch, capturing and interrogating these unnatural creatures. SV-8 races to eliminate every ghoul in the city before they are recovered as specimens for Smirsch research. Meanwhile in America, even before the Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor, President Franklin D. Roosevelt had been consulting with Colonel J. Wild Bill Donovan, a Congressional Medal of Honor winner and Wall Street lawyer, to organize a covert warfare arm of the U.S. military. As early as 1939, Donovan was scouting Ivy League universities, military intelligence branches, and prisons for their requisite talent, even visiting England to obtain advice of the English Secret Intelligence Service. In June of 1942, the new intelligence service was christened the Office of Strategic Services, or OSS. It answered directly to the Joint Chiefs of Staff, and while its purpose was military intelligence, it was staffed by many civilians. FBI Director J. Edgar Hoover prevented the OSS from operating in the United States or Latin America, and General Douglas MacArthur similarly resisted the OSS acting in his Pacific Theater. 
Therefore, the OSS concentrated its efforts in Europe, North Africa, and mainland Asia, particularly China, Burma, and Vietnam. On February 12, 1942, Donovan, promoted to Major General, was approached and briefed by Lieutenant Commander Martin Cook of P-4. Lieutenant Commander Cook made Donovan aware of the Nazis' intense interest in the occult. P-4 had uncovered an unnatural research department within the SS which had Reichsfuhrer's Himmler's ear, the Karotechia, a secret unit of the Ancestral Heritage Research and Teaching Foundation, or Anna Nerby, in Germany. The group's duties included archaeological and anthropological research designed to support Nazi racial and political doctrine. It operated out of his headquarters at Wolfsburg Passel, a distorted Nazi Camelot. The Karatekia's mission was more serious. It devoted its research into the occult for anything that might assist the Nazi war effort. Cook did not acknowledge that P-4's officers believed in the efficacy of strange rituals or the existence of non-human civilizations. Instead, Cook pointed out that British intelligence had lured Deputy Führer Rudolf Hess to Scotland by getting his astrologer to predict that he would single-handedly capture England. Cook also pointed out Himmler's personal interest in the occult, as well as superstitions held by high-ranking Japanese militarists. These, he claimed, could be exploited as a potent tool in the war effort. Donovan was so impressed, he immediately moved to have P-4 fully incorporated into the OSS, and Cook agreed. While P-4 remained its official designation, the new group was giving a special security clearance, Delta Green. In the following video of this series, we will pick up with the development of various Delta Green and Allied projects, along with the fallout of the Karotechia's unnatural ventures. As usual, please remember to like and subscribe to the support the content being created on this channel, and of course, any suggestions on improvements or future subjects is highly appreciated. Until then, good luck and good day.